Greetings, Cyberdogs and citizens of the Interbubs. This is a very salty Ren Diggity Dog coming at you in another episode of Minecraft Survival for Rom, the Hermitcraft server. Guys, I'm having the worst day ever today, man. YouTuber problems have kicked in like nobody's business. I hope you guys are having a much better day than me. Where to begin with my sob story? Well, I have spent the last two days recording a Hermitcraft episode for you guys. It was a total recording time of around 10 to 12 hours and I got so much stuff done. It was unbelievable. Turns out though, that I forgot to set the correct microphone in my recording software and I recorded with my headset microphone instead of my normal microphone, my Yeti microphone, and basically the entire episode is now in the bin because the audio is unlistenable and unusable, which means, well, the episode that you guys were supposed to get today is destroyed by my stupidity. And I'm not entirely sure what to do about this situation, guys, because I really wanted to get an episode out for you today. I thought maybe what we would do is try something a little bit different. Today, we're going to do a summary episode of the long-lost episode 47 that was recorded but never got edited because the audio was rubbish because Rendog is a really terrible YouTuber. That's what the that's what we're going to do today. It's going to be a summary episode of what this episode was supposed to be, okay? And I'm going to take you through everything that I did in the episode and uh, yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy it. And uh, I'm really sorry about this guys. You know, sometimes these things happen to YouTubers. We forget to do our settings correctly. We do freaking 12 hours of work and boom, it all goes into the trash can. It happens to the best of us and uh, luckily it only happens to me every now and then, maybe once, once or twice a year. <laughs> I mess up like this. Anyway, welcome! Here we are on Iskal's side of the island. Some of you may have noticed that there are some changes that have happened around here. And, uh, well, that's very exciting news for us and those of us who are very big fans of the Stakeage and especially of the mushroom o By the way, thanks to everybody who voted in the poll in the previous episode, turns out your guy's favorite build of the netherboard is the Doom Smelter, which I was a little bit surprised by. But you know what? Now that I think about it, it is actually a freaking awesome build. And, uh, yeah, we've actually got some pretty interesting stuff happening to the Doom Smelter today, uh, which we'll talk about in a moment. But anyway, I kicked off the episode by clearing up my prank. Uh, the prank was here uh, for quite a long time. For those of you guys who can remember, it was a prank where I was flooding Iskel's base, base with zombies. There was a very ugly orange block over here, which I got rid of. So that's looking a lot better. And I'm going to try and repair the quadruple zombie spawner at some point too. Uh, but that's looking pretty good. Uh, that took me a little bit of a while to do. And I know that Iskel was, um, you know, thought that I would never clear it up, but I did. And it's all gone now. And Iskal's Island is back to what it used to be, its former freaking glory. I then proceeded to spend the entire day yesterday covering Iskal's side of the island with green concrete powder. That's right. We've been asking Iskal to cover his side of the island for months now, haven't we? Because we wanted to get our mushroom o up and running at full capacity. I just did this because, well, I just really wanted to see if the mushroom matic was going to work as well as I thought it was going to. And uh, I'm very happy to announce, guys, the mushroom matic is firing on all cylinders, man. I'm going to give you guys some of the results. I actually AFK'd last night after the 10 hours of recording. Um, I AFK'd at the mushroom matic to generate some stakeage. And oh boy, did we generate some stakeage. But yeah, as you guys can see, every single block of mycelium around Iskal's Island has now been covered by the Rendigadid dog spent many hours grinding dirt I mean gravel and sand to create this green concrete powder I used the green dye from uh, Bumbo Cactoni which is Iskal's cactus farm so that made it a little bit easier to get all the green concrete powder but yeah literally placed down thousands of blocks of green concrete powder it got a little bit more complicated too because 
Well, there are sections of Iskal's base that are hidden, so to speak, underneath these gorgeous hills that he has created. This is just one of them over here, uh, which is actually open, so it was pretty easy to cover this one. But if we head to the back of Iskal's island over here, there are a couple of artificial mountains that have been created, and inside of those artificial mountains was a ridiculous amount of mycelium. And I had to come into these crevices and cracks to get rid of all of this mycelium too. This is a mountain that also is a part of Iskal's villager farm. But yeah, there was a bunch of mycelium around here. Actually, this is a good opportunity for me to check whether or not any more mycelium has grown down here. Uh, because of course, if there is any mycelium down here, then uh, well, it's our whole, our whole goal to get an efficient mushroom farm is going to be out the window. And well, it does look like there is some mycelium down here. So it looks like I may have missed a block of mycelium somewhere around here, which is rather annoying. I'm going to have to try and discover exactly where the source is. But yeah, spent a lot of the episode doing this, getting rid of all of this jazz. And uh, yeah, that's the Viva Revolution chamber. Shall we just shall we just cover that up and ignore that we ever saw that? <laughs> Spoilers alert. We've just given away the location of our secret base. Oh, man. Everything going wrong today, guys. I tell you what, man. I tell you what. You know, I can't really complain, though. I have an amazing life. Thanks to you guys, man. I get to play Minecraft for a living. And even though I've lost, you know, a good half day's worth of work, hey, I'm not going to complain about it, man. Because, uh, you know, this is what I get to do. And it's awesome. I'm trying not to be salty, okay, guys? I'm trying really hard not to be salty. Now, where is that bit of mycelium? There it is. Jeez, one block of mycelium has triggered all of this growth over here. Absolutely disgusting. Anyway, there's lots of these chambers inside of Iskal's base that I discovered. I think there's probably a few more. I'm hoping that some of you guys out there might be able to uh, give me some hints as to where there might be some more mycelium. I think I've gotten rid of all of it, though, uh, which is great news. And yeah, that has really helped to increase the production of steak over at the Doom Smelter. Uh, over at the Doom Smelter? Over at the Mushroom Matic. So I'm super happy about that. And I gotta say, man, Iskal's Island is looking absolutely amazing now with all of this green, right? I was very curious, actually, to see what his island would look like uh, once it had been covered, and it looks absolutely magnificent. I love it, man. I'm hoping this is gonna be inspire Iskal to do a couple more builds out here, uh, because yeah, it's looking fantastic. Fantastic. So that was one of the main tasks for me in the episode that is that never came into existence. Cover Iskal's side of the island. We did that. We then got together with Exumavoid because uh, we put in a contract last episode, didn't we, to uh, to ask Exumavoid to come and install a bit of a storage system over here for us. Now, I have that footage. The audio is a little bit terrible, so please bear with me on that. But I'm going to show you guys that footage in a moment. I do want to show you the results, though, of the Mushroomomatic efficiency upgrade. Uh, I've got so much steak now that I've managed to give Iskal some, too. So, dear Iskal, I got you, bro. <laughs> Love from Ren Diggity Dog. I've gave him a bunch of steak over here which is amazing and uh, yeah we're basically generating now about three stacks of steak per hour if I AFK at uh, the Mushroomomatic so that's kind of sweet like it's not a huge amount of steak but it's certainly enough steak for me and for Iskal to live on it's you know we were actually feeding a lot on the, the mushrooms that were spawning at Iskal's side of the island because uh, there were lots of them and we could just kill them with our looting swords right that had fire aspect and we could get a bunch of steak that way but yeah ooh, look at this in the last hour i've just managed to pick up uh, another steak or another stack of steak over here almost a stack of steak so that's awesome uh, but there are a couple of other hermits on when when i'm on the server by myself then the mushrooms really spawn out the wazoo like nobody's business so very happy with this and Eskal and i should now have food for the rest of the season as long as i sort of spend quite a lot of time out here in this particular chunk uh, so that we can actually get this mushroom matic firing over here producing those freaking stupid cows down there uh so yeah that's awesome oh oops uh, my bad uh, jeez let me try and get out it's all going wrong today guys jeez i'm gonna freaking die if i'm not careful over here let me see if i can end a pearl myself okay yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to die if I don't uh, take it easy over here. You know what? Let's go over and join Exumavoid for a little bit of a discussion on what I wanted for my storage compartments inside of the Doom Smelter. What a day, guys. What a freaking day. Well, what I've been working on is this thing. It's called the Doom Smelter, okay? It's just an auto-smelting okay. machine of Ugh. doom and destruction. It um, looks incredible from the outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it turned out pretty good. It is it's basically here to create the blocks that I need to create a massive elven kingdom. 
That's Ooh, an Elven yeah. Kingdom. That sounds that sounds very unplasticky. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, so what I'm cooking out here is smooth stone, um, uh huh, and cracked brick and glass, right? And yeah. basically how it works is you stick the blocks that you want to smelt into these chests. They go up this item elevator into a massive like furni cooking facility. The fuel goes in on this side, and uh, you know Bob's ah, your uncle. Sense. Everything gets cooked down and. And uh, the problem, of course, is that I need to store all of this jazz, right? Okay. And well, uh, where and do the items come out? That's where that's where you come in. So I've, I've prepared... This is what I've prepared earlier. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what, Here's I, prepared what I made earlier. earlier. Uh, so they come oh, down I here. See. Okay. And what I've done is I've created a couple of segments over here, right? So this one, this one, and this one. And I yep. want this one to be stone bricks. Um, or smooth stone. Because this is a bigger a bigger yep. section. This one to be the the stone bricks, and this one to okay. be the cracked stone bricks. I've also just realised I haven't got a spot for glass in here. Hmm. And we probably need a spot for um, glass too. Um, wait, so wait, wait, wait! Smooth cracked stone. What was the what was the other option? Gla there's only three, right? Oh yeah, there's only three. <laughs> okay, so I think you counted one twice. <laughs> smooth stone, cracked stone, and glassage. Glass. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so based on the way you've laid this out, what mm -hmm. I could do is just big old, you know, big old block of chests, yep. item filter somewhere up the top, and just make sure they all go to the right place. So you come in here, mm -hmm. walls are chests, and you can just pick out the items you, write, you want, right? That sounds good to me. Like, the problem is that this is a doom smelter, okay? We're smelting, yeah. like, thousands of items, so there needs to be some contingency up in the back here for extra itemage so it needs it, it can't just be a couple of chests you know it's got to be pretty uh foolproof. you you want a lot of chests i can yeah. i can i can work with that but i i do have an alternative idea as well and Ooh. i think this alternative idea you're really gonna like okay. i don't know if you saw the system that i built for scar but i basically made something where you got a shulker box let's let's grab one um shulker box right it's going to have shulker boxes stored inside of like a dropper, a container, Ooh. and it's going to use them to load up the items that come out of the smelter. And then when it's done, it'll go into a chest. You can pull out, put it on the ground, and it will be full of the material that you're after, right? Ooh, dude, now, that, this means crazy. you've got to stock it up with shulkers. Like each one needs to have shulker boxes ready to go. Okay. But I thought this would be good for you because you want to transport all of this somewhere yeah. else, right? Exactly, exactly, yeah. Dude, so that's... if it's already in a shulker box, yeah. then that's that's going to work for you. That's freaking genius. Dude, that is genius. Like, <laughs> that is absolute genius. I mean, I when you were talking Thank about you, man. the... Thank you, I'll, I'll take all the credit, but I didn't, yeah. I didn't come up with the design. When you it's, were talking about the mechanics, <laughs> like, uh, my brain turned off. I don't know what you were talking about. But it sounds super fancy, and I like it. Well, my day's definitely not getting any better, Cyberdox. I was just blown up by a creeper. I've come over here to the Elven Kingdom because this is where I spent the next part of the episode and a couple of creepers have already exploded around here, taken me down to Chinatown. Oh my goodness. When it rains, it pours. Am I right, Cyberdogs? My freaking goodness, man. What? Okay. All right. This is getting ridiculous now. <laughs> this is getting ridiculous. Do you guys ever have one of these days? Please tell me I'm not alone. Uh, did that creeper just blow up my pickaxe too? I I think that creeper literally just... Oh. oh, my goodness. I was literally about to rage quit, guys. You were about to witness the very first ever Ren Dog rage quit. If that creeper had blown up my pickaxe... I would have just closed this down for the day and probably for a couple of days, to be honest. And I don't know, gone to London or something and got away from freaking YouTube for a while. Oh my goodness, Creeper's ruining my day. Oh man. Anyway, the exciting news is Exuma Void is working on a super fancy sorting system for us for the Doom Smelter, guys. I am so excited to see what he's going to do with it. Oh my goodness, man. He's given me some ideas or, or a breakdown of how it's going to work. It's going to be using shulker boxes and and all that sort of sweet sweet stuff man it's going to be super mechanical uh, sorting system that i've never made before so i'm really really curious to see how it's going to turn out and uh, he's actually working on that today in fact i think he might have finished it already so make sure you check out his channel this weekend he's going to be putting out a video this weekend uh, showing the construction of that storage system uh, and you know what i'll stick a link in the description box for below for you guys too uh, just in case you don't know how to get to the legend that is the exuma void who's making us a so sweet freaking storage room. 
Anywho, so next up in the lost, forever lost episode was some work here at the Mobilisa Elven Kingdom. I'm trying to get myself together over here, guys. Let me get a sip of this beverage, okay? That creeper really took it out of me, man. Mm. I'm freaking tilting, man. I'm tilting! Um, anyway, we came out here to the Mobilisa project, guys, for two very important tasks. Number one, I wanted to start laying out some plots here in the city that I want to give to some hermits to come and work on. A lot of the hermits on the server have expressed some interest in coming to help me out here at the Mobilisa project. And uh, here's what I'm thinking, right? I'd like to give sort of segments of the city to the hermits. And uh, what I wanted to do in the episode is get some of the plots laid down, just so we can get a, a more general idea of what the city's going to look like, right? So using these blue blocks, I've created a whole bunch of different plots. There's about 20, 20 20 plots or so out here now and uh, they're all sort of 13 by 13 17 by 17 there's some longer ones too some bigger ones some interesting ones on the hill over here which i think could be really cool right like how would we put something on top of this hill like a tower or something like that that could be pretty sweet and uh, my thinking is like i kind of want to give segments of the city to one of the hermits i know that stress wants to come and help me out here uh, as soon as possible so i was thinking maybe i could give her this like entire quadrant of the city and uh, she could sort of work on that and come up with some really cool buildings and really cool designs out here. Uh, now, it's very important, though, of course, that if hermits are going to come out here and start working, that we have some sort of a block palette for them, some sort of a design palette for them, so that, so that they can build stuff that is going to match the design of the Mobilisa over here. Uh, if you guys are seeing this for the very first time, this is a, a massive project that I'm working on with this girl. This is a mini game called the Mobilisa, and we're working on this side of things. This is the elven side of the Mobilisa project. And Iskal is working on the orcish side on this side, which looks really sweet, right? And we've got a very specific block palette that we're working with over here. This is a very ancient and very, uh, well, well-designed and modern elven city. That's the idea about this, right? These are very advanced elves that are, have advanced architectural skills. Basically, there used to be an ancient elven forest over here. These trees are the last remaining trees of that ancient elven forest. And the elven nation came to protect the last remaining trees. And they erected this massive kingdom, these huge fortifications. And behind this fortification was a city where all of the elven warriors were living, I suppose, or where the, the elven nation was, was existing. And uh, this city is made up of a very specific block palette. The primary block, of course, is stone bricks. And uh, I guess uh, stone slabs are also a primary block, too, in the palette. And it's very important that the whole city matches this style as close as possible. I don't want all the buildings to look like this, right? And I want the hermits to use their own creativity and come up with their own awesome designs out here. But it's very important that the block palette itself stays consistent because that is going to be uh, what makes the city looks look absolutely incredible when it's when it's completed by the end of season five right uh, well that's the plan anyway uh, i've done a lot of work on the roads actually which we've been doing in the last few episodes or so i've done quite a bit off camera too i don't think i showed you guys all of this completed design work for the roads but i think it's turned out really nicely i've got these really symmetrical lines running down the center of the roads i think that looks really nice um, and we might do a little bit of more work with these roads like adding some trees and stuff into this uh, but for now i just wanted to get these plots down and we got a whole bunch of different plots here next episode i want to start working on our own building here right i was thinking about taking this spot over here these two big buildings and I'd like to create maybe the main central building for the Elven Nation. I was even thinking about making it like a mega building, right? So, so half of the building would be on this side and then half of the building would be on this side. And then there would be like a massive archway that would run over the central road. That's kind of what I'm thinking. The problem, of course, is that I've put the storage facility right in the center of the kingdom like a Minecraft noob. And I'm going to have to move all of these chests and thousands of blocks of items that are in these chests right now into a location more suitable uh, for storage for a project like this so that's kind of annoying but yeah if we just get up onto this mountain i want to talk about this build that i might do in the next episode yeah so can you imagine like a really massive building in the center here right that sort of spans over this road i think that could be kind of sweet it might be a little bit too big but my thinking is like we've got a main road coming from this um this hole in the wall over here and that's kind of going to go straight into the center of that building so if we were looking up the city in this way 
uh, you know, we could see this really massive building over here. I think that could look really, really, really sweet. So we're going to be doing a little bit of experimenting next episode uh, on that. We've been working in the, on the netherboard for quite a long time now, and I need to adjust my eyeballs away from the plastic fantastic of the netherboard, right? And I want to come out here and spend a little bit of time with old school traditional Minecraft blocks. You guys, you guys know what I'm saying over here, man. Anyway, uh, outside of the kingdom, I then spent a lot of time working on a block palette for the kingdom itself. And I'm excited. I am super excited about this because I think this is going to be a fantastic block palette for us to work with. I'm going to take you guys through what I, I sort of came up with over here in my thinking behind it. And uh, yeah, I've sort of separated it into different segments over here just to make it a little bit easier for the hermits to understand. But over here, we got primary building blocks. These are gonna be the primary building blocks for the Elven City. Smooth stone, stone bricks, white concrete, and then uh, stone slabs and stone stairs. And of course, uh, smooth stone slabs too, right? And if we go back and have a look at how we built the, uh, the sort of battlements over here, we can see that those are basically the primary blocks for this build, right? We got the stone bricks, we've got Got the stone slabs and we've got the white concrete bricks too which are in a kind of interesting position actually because they make up a very big portion of the walls right they they're, they're almost trim blocks i suppose but actually they are very important a very important part of these wall structures right you can see they're over here uh, deep within the center of these walls and i guess even though we're not using a ton of these white blocks, they're even down there, actually. Uh, they are a very important part of wall structures in this Elven Kingdom. So that's why I put, I put white concrete blocks into the primary block palette. Even though I don't want to see a ton of white concrete blocks, it's important that every single building has white concrete blocks in them somewhere, right? So that's why uh, our primary building blocks have been set up like this. Now, our secondary building blocks is where it gets a little bit more interesting. We are using white concrete powder or light gray concrete powder and light gray concrete blocks as well as chiseled stone and polished andesite and uh, this is what I want to see the majority of the buildings getting made out of right like these two block pallets over here um, that's very very important I think uh, for the hermits to take note of those are the these are going to be the primary building blocks and we will su be supplying all of these blocks too of course now let's head over to the accent blocks which I think is the most difficult uh, sort of block palette to create when you're creating such a massive project We've got to have all of these blocks here, right? Because this project is so huge. But this is a very important block over here. This is a light blue concrete powder. And this is the color of this elven race. This is the color that represents them, right? And we have thrown a bunch of these beautiful blocks at the very top of these, these uh, towers over here. And these are supposed to be like massive gems, basically. These are the are, are huge, I don't know, rubies or something that the, that the elves have brought over here. And they've got power and they emit light. And I don't know, maybe they're magical of some kind. I don't know. They're just an important part of the lore for the elvish build. So that is probably the most important accent block that we're going to be using our here at the city and i want to see that block in every single building maybe above the doorways maybe in the roofs maybe in little like towers or spires that are coming out of the building we just want to see that little splash of gem right that little splash of light blue concrete powder very very important block now the other accent blocks here we've got andesite cracked stone uh, we've got slab uh, cobblestone slabs sorry we've got um, gravel and we've got cobblestone too now these are going to be very tricky blocks to use in this build because these blocks kind of go against what we are trying to go, get go with the lore over here, right? These are master architectural elves, as I mentioned before, and everything that they've made has been perfectly crafted. So these blocks over here are just accent blocks. Every now and then we want to use these just to add maybe a touch of oldness into it. Maybe there's at the very bottom of this tower, for example, we would have a little bit of andesite down here because these bricks may have eroded and they haven't been repaired yet, for example, right? Uh, we're thinking here that the elves are doing constant repair work on their city keeping everything pristine so it's going to be pretty difficult to use these blocks in the build but i want to have them in the palette just in case we need them uh, especially the cracked stone brick because that's obviously going to go really well with uh, the primary and secondary building blocks over here now we've got some color blocks here too that i'm kind of excited about using uh, we're using white we're using dark blue light blue cyan and a little bit of gray i don't know where the gray is going to fit in but i wanted to have a dark block in the palette just in case we need it 
for dungeons or underground sections and, and that sort of thing. And these colors are going to be super important for us. And actually, we should probably remove this block from the uh, color palette, right? Because that is that is the gem representation. We don't want to be seeing the, uh, the light blue concrete powder as a part of carpeting or uh, overhangs for marketplaces and stuff like that, right? We're going to reserve that for for cyan and for the other light blue blocks and we're going to be using solid concrete blocks and wool and concrete powder for this too right just to sort of mix up the texture a little bit uh, when we get to these sort of colored areas i think this is probably going to be mostly interior work carpets like i said and beds and and that sort of thing and maybe there, there will be stuff outside too maybe some roofs can be made out of this like a dome or something might uh, might be able to be made out of blue uh, i don't know we'll see what the hermits come up with we've got, also got a couple of glass blocks too here we got clear glass, white glass, and light blue glass too. And I, I just want that glass as the windows, right? I don't want a darker glass. I was thinking about using the dark blue glass, but I don't know. I think it's going to look a little bit weird. Let's keep the glass nice and light colored, and that's going to match this block palette really nicely, right? I think those glasses are going to look really good with these blocks over here. Lastly, we've got a wood palette here too. Um, I don't anticipate us using a lot of wood in this build, but there might be times where we need to have like wooden wooden pillars and uh you know and structures that might be uh, made out of logs i don't know support beams things like that right so we're going to be using spruce and oak for this as well as well as the stairs and the slabs and the planks i think that's okay as long as we don't see too much of it on the outside i think we're going to be pretty good i kind of want this place to be a bit of a concrete jungle and we're going to break up the concrete with trees right we're going to plant some of those amazing trees that we saw in the arena inside of the city too because this is uh, where the the old elven forest used to be so there will still be a couple of trees you know we could plonk like a really beautiful tree in the corners over here at the crossroads maybe even in the center of the crossroads we could have some trees in fact maybe uh, some parts of the city could be like a park section that would literally just be made out of the trees, right? And uh, so we don't really want to have a lot of logs and planks and stuff on the outside. But I think it'll be an important part of the interior of some of the buildings too, to have a little bit of wood in there, wood in there too, right? I mean, elves love trees after all, so it makes sense that they would use a little bit of trees uh, too. I guess what we still need to add into this block palette is like foliage, uh, leaves and, and flowers. Which flowers are we going to be using? Which leaf types are we going to be using? Are we going to be using any green blocks? Uh, stuff like that. I, I I think we also need to get a bit of iron into the build some iron fences maybe iron doors iron trap doors maybe even anvils stuff like that right i'm going to expand this block palette over time but i just wanted to get like a very simple one down just to make sure that you guys are on the same page and that uh and that you know you guys like this um if you guys think that i'm missing out on any blocks over here hit me up in the comments send me some screenshots on twitter if you guys think we need to add a few more blocks in here uh, i shall be watching uh, with my freaking eagle eyes because yeah this this is going to be an exciting project and I really want to get this thing done for season five and the more hermits we can get involved the, the quicker we can get this done and uh, you know the more that we can do out here the more inspired the hermits will get so uh, yeah super excited about getting cracking on making some beautiful elvish buildings and yeah that is pretty much everything that I was supposed to do in today's episode guys and that's everything that I did do I guess uh, and yeah it took me a freaking long time and I'm really sorry that I couldn't bring you guys any of that footage the audio was just so terrible uh, you might have heard how bad it was in the segment with Exuma it was basically like that for the entire episode and it was just it, it was basically like breaking my eardrums right and I didn't want to put you guys through that so I'm, I apologize for today's sort of summary episode uh, of what we actually were supposed to be doing but yeah super exciting stuff going on anyway and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this anyway and you know what for all of my pains guys give me a like come on make me feel a little bit better okay seriously it's been a bit of a rough day, especially when I got blown up by that creeper. That was a cherry on the top, man. But yeah, that's going to do it for today, guys. I think I'm just going to close down Minecraft now for the rest of the day. And um, yeah, I'll probably play again tomorrow and Sunday. Um, but for now, me and Minecraft, we're done. We're going to take a break. <laughs> we're breaking up for 24 hours. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed it, remember to hit the like button. If you haven't, haven't subs you know what, guys? I'm done. We'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.